Good morning, Olivia and Mike Akima. How are you girls and guys today? <clears throat> I hope everything is going well. We're going to get started in just a minute. I'm sipping on my coffee, hoping my brain wakes up. We got so much snow today. Got a foot of snow covering everything overnight. I would still include your early work, Olivia, into your portfolio and just have it in its own section that says early works, plural. You can put all of your game dev stuff in there if you want. It's not going to hurt your chances showing you're able to do different things. Obviously, you would like to show that you're specializing. You don't want to go into your interview and be like, oh, I'm a jack of all trades. I can do anything. Just don't say that. Just be like, this is some of my early work, but I specialize in blah, 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 blah. And talk about the thing that you're really good at instead of like, you can do everything. Because no hiring, no per no employer wants to hear that you can do everything. But you can still include your works. <clears throat> they want to know exactly where you're going to fit in. And they want to know what your specialty is. That way they can put you in a certain area and know that you'll excel in that area and help the team instead of just like bouncing around and, you know, with no center focus point. Yeah, you'll do fine. Legion88, welcome to Deathstram. How are you today, Legion? We're going to get started in just a minute here. Hey baby, thanks for coming to the stream. I hope the drive is not as awful as it looks. <clears throat> well, we might as well get started here. What are we going to do today? We're going to put our ears to the grindstone. All right, some good coffee. Hello, Blitz. How are you doing today? Hello, hi, Blitz. How's Drifty doing? Drifty's doing okay. I'm doing all right. That was pretty weird, speaking of myself in the third person. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. It's really snowy outside. Charzenico, welcome to the stream. But for some reason, people in this area still have to go to work. <clears throat> the neighboring counties are like, nope, snow day. The schools, nope, snow day, nobody come in, it's too, too much snow, flash snow.
the moment you're enjoying your coffee, I don't have no life. Well, if you don't have no life, that means you have a life. Because that's a double negative and they cancel each other out. So basically you said, I have life. That's cool. It's good that you have life, Blizz. Life is good. I don't think I've ever caught one of your live streams before. Good timing, I guess. Fusion of the Aces, how are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. What are we going to create now? We're going to find something to create. I know we need more recipes in our system. We have our versions of enchanted weapons here. Maybe we'll add some new armors today. The database work is still long. It's still going to be a long time before it's completed. So we'll keep adding on to it. We could use another enemy. That takes quite a while to, to pick the art and then to make the skills and the items. And we have so many items and not enough things to do with those items. I think the best course of action for today is to allocate a use for some of these items that are currently only valued to be sold. So we allocated Batwing, Spiderwing, and uh, Rattail last episode that we were working on this. I hope you don't mind, but I'll be listening to you more in the background while I work on making my own game in SRPG Studio 2. Not a problem. I do that more than I actually actively watch. So, I mean, I totally get it. It's really cool to have somebody, like, in the background on another monitor, or even minimize just listening to them work on their project while I'm working on my, on my project. Kind of feels like uh, I'm not alone doing it, so it's cool. It gives me a little bit of inspiration. I see other people are currently working on their stuff and it ins inspires me to work on my stuff too. So I totally get a fusion and I'm totally cool with that. So we need to maybe use the spider fang. Did we already do that? We did bat wing, spider leg, and something else. Let's look at this. Spider leg. Rat tail, bat wing, and spider leg. We can make a item that is harder to get by combining the uncommon items, or maybe make commons and uncommons together in a recipe as well, because you're going to have more commons than uncommons. We also need to tie in some other ideas that we were talking about. Like I need to create a new timer and add another mining outpost to the second island, as well as a logging outpost. I need to create a port town right here, and I need to create a port town right here. So the thing the project needs the most right now, even though I don't like saying it, is maps. I've got to create some more maps. Oof. Well, because I don't want to make maps right now, which I'm going to anyway, I'm still, and we still have a lot of database work to do. Let's do a little bit of that and then move over to making a map. Maybe one map. All right, one item, let's do one item. Take baby steps. When you don't know what to do with your project, figure out one small thing and then do that one little thing, and then move on to the next little thing. Your SRPG Studio series was quite useful when I was getting started, by the way. I wanted to thank you for it, and what a better time than I... Okay, then to do it directly. Thank you so much, Fusion. I'm glad it was helpful. I kind of just dipped my toes in the water of SRPG Studio. If I wasn't currently in the middle of making a game of my own, I would have devoted more time and resources into it, but I did start it off pretty strong, and um, in fact some people were like, oh, are you not doing RPG Maker anymore, are you just doing SRPG Studio? I'm like, no, 
I just need to put out some content for those who need a little like head start, like an introduction into the, the into the engine, right? So I'll I'll make more tutorials on SRPG Studio. I didn't buy it for sixty dollars just to make you know twelve tutorials on it or whatever. Does the game have a main villain? Not yet. Nope. A lot of the story elements are not in the game yet. The conceptuals, the conceptual idea of, of the main enemy is there though. An opposing mayor who runs another island, towns, and, and whatnot. And by the time you get there, you can't just purchase them. You have to offer... You, you have to either take them over by raiding them or offer a diplomatic solution or buy them out like economically so there'll be three ways really all right we've got bat guano we need to do something with Let's uh, do an homage to a classic film and make bat guano become plates, like for people to eat off of, like plates and bowls. <laughs> and what that'll do is upgrade the value for you to sell, like it'll be worth more. So the Bat Guano costs 600. And we can make three Bat Guano become something else that's a higher value that you would sell to the town. And instead of being 1800, it would be like 2500. So we need an icon for a bat guano plate or bowl. Let's go into Ace Bright and get our arting done. Oh, this program is called A Sprite. It's a really good sprite editing, um, a sprite creation tool. Yeah, A S E P R I T E. What if I make it like more of a top down? It's really good. I would recommend picking up a sprite. I got it on sale when it was, I think, $12. It's usually like only $15. So it's usually not too expensive. If you compare it to some other image editing software, it's, inc it's incredibly overpriced. This one's actually affordable. And it gives you lots of export options as well. And there's a lot of tutorials on it. I personally think it's fantastic.
I use it all the time. And I'm not good at art. Like, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm not, I would not consider myself really good at art. Like, when, we, when we're talking about, like, creating sprites and whatnot. Where's the rotate? Okay, and, and I able to rotate this? Oh, okay, here we go. You can move it. Do I have to use the circle to do a rotation? Maybe. And I'm constantly just learning how to how to use the software. Anyway, I'm not gonna get too hung up on it. Any Thanksgiving plans, Drifty? No, I don't celebrate holidays. Actually, do not celebrate any holidays. That probably sounds very strange, but it's very liberating to not um, be trapped into society's norms. And add some bright gray at the top corner, okay. Is this supposed to be for like a, a reflection? Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> Gotti. <laughs> That's too bright. Okay. You know, that's the first time I've heard that saying be used correctly. <laughs> I see why A-Sprite is good now. It does not screw up the pixels when you change the shape. Right. Yes. If you do that in Photoshop, it makes it very blurry and does like some anti-aliasing things to try to make it look better, but it doesn't actually look better. It makes it look a little worse. Okay. This is our guano plate. It's good enough. We're gonna move on. DG underscore guano plate. <clears throat> oh, one. All right, let's add it to our project. Easy to do thing. We're gonna select right here because this is where we're gonna put it, our guano plate. This strong and durable eating utensil. That's probably not how you spell utensil. Discord spell check utensil. U T E N S I L. Okay. Discord has spell check now, it's great. Link is in the description below if you want to join our Discord. I should probably plug that. The strong and durable eating utensil was made with bat guano. I could even go slash item icon and then reference bat guano 41 so it shows the icon. It 
it's worth more. You can sell it for more. <laughs> like, the player needs to know what's the point of this. It's to sell. So use the back guano to make an item that sells for more. Good price. Yeah. It's worth 3,000 points. It's not consumable, no scope. Of course, you sell at half price, so you get 1,500 for it. Chainer, welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming. How are you doing? We need to add that icon, though. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Save our project. We're going to press Game, Open Folder, and then we're going to do the same thing again. Game, Open Folder. Oh, I guess we have to move out of this folder first. Go to where we're going to copy the thing we just created. Did I save it as an A sprite? I did. What I need to do is export it as a PNG. So I saved it, but what I need to do is hit export and save it as a PNG. And we'll do that, export that. Now it's exported. I can just go into Photoshop and open up the games. We need to open up two things, really. We need to open up the A sprite that we created, the guano plate, and we need to open up the games systems IMG, IMG PNG that is the icon set PNG. I dyslexia has much, very. We can scroll down with this. <clears throat> I like the control space bar left click to zoom. It's pretty cool. Neat little trick that Crown Royal showed me. And I'm going to turn on the grids with control and quote. And from this uh, image, I'm just going to select the entire frame because I made it 32 by 32. And we'll copy that. And I'll go to the icon set and I'll go into here where it's 32 by 32 in the grid. And I'll paste it in there right there. And I'll just hit File, Save as a PNG, and we'll have to overwrite, overwrite the existing, save that, OK, OK. And then when we hit Save and reopen the, the database, it'll find the Guano Plate, and we created some more custom assets for our game. Let me catch up. Try to zoom out when you're spriting to see how it looks. It's a good idea. Hey Drifty, what would you, th what do you think would be the appropriate amount of side quests for a game? I'm currently making a game with a few, with quite a few, and I don't want to go overboard. Well, Vapor, play your game, beta test it, and do you feel overwhelmed? It's going to be completely arbitrary really how many you put in it's up to you it doesn't matter exactly the number I can't say seven you always should have seven I don't think there's a magic number the thing about it is you you want to beta test it a lot do your beta testings and if you feel like you're being overwhelmed with too many things then you know maybe put you don't have to, to remove them but maybe make them available later or maybe make the, them available one at a time. Drip feed them if you have to. I think optional quests, it's good to have a lot so that the player can optionally get a lot of value out of your content. But definitely don't front load them. Don't give the player eight quests right at the beginning. Don't do that. Give the player one main quest. Give the player some motive. What is he supposed to be doing? Defeat the big bad, whatever it is. The player needs to know early on what they're doing, what they should be doing, um, and what the big goal is, right? The long-term quest line. That's your main story. And then introduce one, a singular side quest during that uh, first part. 
And then when that side quest is done, make the player have to do the next step in the main quest to get the next side quest. So the player gets main quest storyline progression, then you present them with another side quest, just one. They don't have to do it. So it's like they're driving down a highway and there's an exit, you know, and then they can choose to take that exit and then loop back up the ramp and come back on the highway, or they can skip it and just keep going. What you don't want to do is make like five on-ramps all at the same time. Because if the player's not going to know which one to take, where do they go? Have you ever been driving down a highway and you see an on-ramp and another on-ramp and another on-ramp and the next exit a quarter mile? Like, you don't know which one. Okay, I know I have to get off somewhere right here, but I don't know if it's this one or if it's this exit 2B or 3C or what, right? So give them a pretty much straight, narrow motive. Give the player motive. Let the, let the player know the character's motive, rather and give them one exit ramp, you know, every so many miles. I'm using analogies, but hopefully it makes sense. Do I know a good place to get some spell graphics? Um, Hadison has animation packs for sale, and you can create your own animation packs yourself, too. It's, um... It's not too hard because the animation editor is so cool. It's, it has so many func so much functionality. It's one of my favorite things with the RPG Maker line is the animation editor. Because you could take an existing pattern like, okay, let's take, let's take this spell, right? We have silence. We can copy this pattern and we can paste in another image right over that pattern. And then it changes it, right? And you can change the sound effects. <clears throat> you can change the, the hue of that image. So you don't have to have several uh, recolors, reskins of the same image. You just put one in and it can change it. You can edit the frames. You can shift them up and down. You can perform bulk actions on all of them. So the animation editor is really cool. But maybe you don't know how to make your own um, spell animations. We could do that in Ace Bright as well. If we take a look, it's like 960 by, I think you could do 960 by 960. If we go into to here and we open up one of the animations, which will be an IMG. If you're, not, if you're ever unsure of like what size, just take a look at the size that, of the resources that are already being used. And I have a tutorial on this somewhere too, how to make your own custom animations. Maybe I can find that for you. Driftwood Gaming Custom Animations Tutorial. Create custom animations in seconds. It's a two minute tutorial. Is this the one? It was the first option. Oh, this shows you how to change up using existing patterns. Okay, so that, that is custom animations. Custom animation sheet by Tease Jams. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna link hers. This is how you would go about making them. Link incoming. This is a tutorial from my wife, and she shows how to make your own custom animation sheets. Right there, if you need that. But basically, you just. I think it's 960 by 960, does she say in here? I'm sure she does. Either way, we can open up the animations and take a look at them. Let's take the absorb one. And if I turn off the grids, then we can see better. But if I look at the canvas size and pixels 960 by 960 yeah <clears throat> that's what I thought but we have one two three four five frames by however many you want so but you have to have five across I mean, you don't necessarily have to have five frames but you need to space them out so that the width is 960 and it'll read that as five different frames and then you can have the list as long as you want really 
if we take a calculator and divide 960 by 5, then we see it's 192. So it's basically a 192 by 192 frame that is rep replicated with, full, with five columns, or no, five pillars, you have five columns, and however many rows you want. So if we can take this idea, we can create our own um, animation sheet. Let's do that in Asprite. It's really easy. Let's make a new animation in Asprite. So we're going to have to click on new, and we're going to go 192 by 192. We're just going to design one frame, right? So let's pick a palette. Let's make our own animation at art. This is extremely intimidating. Uh, it's, it's easy, Fusion. Real simple, you're gonna, make a, a, you're gonna make a 192 by 192 piece of art and then you're gonna move it around. And, and you export that in the right way. I have a tutorial on how to do it too, exporting to a sprite sheet, as a sprite sheet. I never did a tutorial on how to, how to do an animation sheet. So this will be interesting, this will be cool. I could probably make this a standalone tutorial even. We're gonna make a 192 by 192, and then we're going to just pick a palette, so, you know, pick some colors we want. This will be fine. And we'll draw something. Let's go here. Let's go with maybe like 14. And give it a tail. The animation can be whatever you want. This is a, a very, very crappy one just to illustrate a point. I feel like I'm playing a game, like Osu or something. Alright, so this will be our starting animation. Maybe we'll do this again with a different color. Test your skills. Drawing inside the line. Oh no. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Obviously, this is just one of many ideas you can do to create a custom animation effect. But what we're going to do here is turn this into multiple frames. So I'm just going to press Control N. Actually, I think it's Alt N. Alt N. That's going to make a new frame. On this frame, I want to rotate it. So how do we do the rotate? Let's select it all. Let's select the whole thing. If we're able to. Here we go, we rotate it. Okay, we press Alt N again, and we give it another little rotation. Alt N, we give it another rotation. Alt N. So this is going to give us five frames. We can continue to, to move on if we want. So we have this, this, 
like this. Then that. We should be rotating the other direction though. Huh. Let's do that. We're down to the first frame. Let's repeat it. Let's select it all. Put it more centered. That'll be our first frame, all in. And I want it to rotate this direction. Alt-N, rotate it again. Alt-N. Let's give it a little bit of a minuscule size change and then go down again. Alt-N, size change it a little bit, and we'll rotate again. Alt-N, a little bit of a size change, rotate it again. In, size change, rotate. I think we'll do 10. We'll do 10. So let's play it. Now we have an animation. Let's see, is 9 and 10 the same? It is, so we need to move 10 a little bit. There we go. We have a 10 frame animation. Now what do we do with this 10 frame animation? We can export it. So let's go ahead and clue, choose export sprite sheet. And we're going to, did I say import? Yeah, I must have said import. Export sprite sheet. And we're gonna set it up by rows. So it's gonna put it in order to rows, but we need to select the number of columns. And remember, we're gonna have to have five. For some reason it, it likes to trouble here. Maybe if we highlight the entire thing and say five. There we go. Weird little bug. When you're selecting the number of columns, you may have to highlight it and then put a number in for it to change correctly. And since it's 192 by 192, it's going to tell you, well, if you have five columns and you organize it by rows, the file size is going to be 960 by 384. And that's fine because the width is still 960. It's going to divide that into five frames. So we're gonna say all visible layers, we're gonna give it a file name. So we'll say DG underscore um, custom spiral anim dot <clears throat> PNG. And you can export JSON data too. I don't know how to use that very well. So we're just gonna output as a PNG and we'll export it. And so we can, hold up, not do that. We can zoom out and this is the file that we exported. Now we have an animation, like a spell animation. That's great and all. What do we do with that? Well, we can go to a sprite folder, copy it, and then go to the game and open the folder and put it inside the IMG animations, like this. And you can, um, it's probably better to rename it with an exclamation point. Give it a naming convention so that you can organize it better. I'm putting an exclamation so it appears next to all of my other um, custom ones. But you don't have to do that. Once you do that, you can press save on your project, open up your uh, database, go to the animation, and now if you go to images, you'll see that the artwork you just created is in here and you can change the color on it if you want. And you can create animations with it here and continue to edit what the actual animation looks like. And because you animated it in a sprite and you can see the frames animate, it makes it simple to go like this and say 0, 0, 100. And then you can copy the frame and paste the frame, edit this and change the pattern to two. Copy the frame, paste the frame, Change the pattern to three. Copy, paste, edit, change it to four. 
copy paste, change to 5. We'll repeat this until we get to 10. If we hit play, we now have our new animation that we just created. That's pretty cool. And we'll call this Custom Spiral 1. You could add sound effects to it if you want to. I mean, we might as well go all the way with it, huh? Let's make our own custom sound effect. Hey, do you play Delta Room? I haven't played it yet. I This is too master PC. <laughs> you can use the twin command. Oh, that's right. To avoid the repetition. Say you had like 50 frames. You can. You can use the twin command. And close this. Let's uh let's go over that real quick. Let's go here and repeat the process. How would you make that even more simple? You would find the same piece of artwork. That's right, that's a good, a good observation. Let's look at that. So you would create the first frame and you would put it on zero, zero, or wherever you want it, really. The first frame, then you're gonna just press uh, new frame so you can do control and. And you have 10 frames. Actually, we want this one to be at the top, so we'll go like this. And then on frame 10, you take this one which will be pattern 10. And you do zero, zero, like that. And now what we can do is click on the tween, and we're gonna select all the frames and all of the cells and take all of the data and tween them. So what this is gonna do is take the first frame and the last frame, and then it'll basically make all the changes required to make it work. So you see now, it's changing the pattern. If we look right here, this is pattern four. And then, but it will say outcome. It just took a lot less work. A lot less work. I forgot about that. Oh no! Audacity messed up my mic. Is that better? Is that better? Okay. Something happens when you try to use the same microphone for multiple applications. So hopefully it didn't, um, I did that fast enough so it didn't kill the stream. It looks like it didn't drop the stream. I mean, it's definitely gonna drop the stream for like a few seconds. Because I had to close OBS. If this happens to you guys when you're live streaming and you sound like a robot, um, try to close OBS, like first you stop your stream, you stop your recording, close OBS, immediately open it up again and start your stream really quickly. If it's within like a 10 second or 15 second time frame that it ends and it starts again, it won't like make a new video out of it. Um, I mean locally it will, but your stream will all still be in one stream, it'll just like truncate that part when it loads it. I wonder when I hit record if it's going to mess everything up. That happens again. I, I apologize. I apologize. So then the next question I have is how to 
How do people make their actors directly animate? Like, for example, an actor lets of a custom sword swing energy. Let's off a custom. Oh, okay. Oh, fusion. That's changing the sprite. Uh, well, there's two ways. You can draw the sword on top of the sprite, um, but most of the time, if it's customized like that um, in the scene map, then it's all sprite work, right? It's in it's in the sprite work. Let's open up a sprite. Are you talking about in battle or like in a cutscene? Because it's two different things. If you're talking about in battle, it's going to be using these. In battle, it's going to be using these. In battle, right. Okay, so in battle, you have your attack animation. Let me just find an actual actor, not an enemy. Where is the stretched out one? Here we go. This will work fine. So you can see right here, he's got his punch attack, but he also has a use weapon attack. So the sprite itself has its movements and the weapon is drawn on top of that. If you wanna make a custom weapon, there's a plugin called um, Weapon Animations, Yenthlai's Weapon Animations, and that lets you custom design your own swords and weapons that appear on top of it. So this still follows a grid as well. It's divided by the horizontal values, but the the uh, vertical values can be stretched and changed. They actually all of both of them can be changed. You just have to put in uh, characters in the name so the engine knows how to interpret the asset. Let me give you a link to a plugin that might be helpful to you. Yanfly.mo. <clears throat> and we'll search for a plugin that'll help you. called weapon animation and basically you'll have to download the plugin put it in your JS folder and also the the assets like you have to download this if you want to download the entire package you can do it right here link incoming and this will let you put a note tag <clears throat> in your database you'll go to weapons and put in a note tag or right, wait I think it's on the, the skills themselves let's look at the plugin I've used it before I don't use it in this project yet but I plan to or no I do use it in this project actually don't I? Yeah. Weapon image. Like right here. This is the note tag you put on the weapon. And it uses this, this image. You'll have to make a folder inside your game's IMG. And you call this folder weapons. So it's a new folder that's not there by default. And you load it with the three frame animation you want that your weapon's going to have. Ganfly has created a bunch of them, so you can reference those. But basically, that's how you get custom looking weapons. These are drawn on top of the battler. 
and you take the name of them <clears throat> and you put them right here. You put them in a note tag for the weapon, weapon image, and you put the name of it, but you don't include the .png because it automatically adds that when it looks for it. What about making a custom attack animation with it? I need to make sprites for it, yeah, but then how do I make the actor perform the custom animation? Fusion, maybe you're talking about an action sequence. That's another set of plugins, which we can talk about for hours and hours, and still you'd be like, huh? Probably. Action sequencing, it's not that complicated, but there's just a lot of note tags and Let's look at an action sequence. Yeah, you set up the entire sequence. So here's an action sequence. We started up with the setup action, so we go to the skill in the note tags and we say setup action. I want to display the name. So you have to just go to the help file. You'll need a few things. You'll need Yanfly's core engine, Yanfly's battle engine core, and the action sequence packs. All the information you need to know is in the help files, but they're extensive, they're massive, right? And you may not know where to start, so maybe this will jumpstart you. Um, we're not gonna worry about all of this stuff, but these are the things that you're going to be referencing to make your character and your skills do different things and look different. Shake the camera, zoom in with the camera, um, show animations, control variables. You can do all kinds of stuff inside of an action sequence. There are five types of, ac of actions inside the sequence. You have your setup actions. It tells you what they do here, basically before the thing happens. Whole actions are for like when you target all allies or all enemies, there's gonna be part of a whole action. A target action is going to be something that targets a specific thing, a specific target, right? So if it's like you're, you're going to attack one thing five times, it'd be a target action for that. Lots of action effects in there. Follow actions are what's going to happen after the target or whole action has occurred. And then you have a finish action, which will probably close off anything you started in the setup actions. So these five different steps of a sequence. And this is basically how it looks. You see a setup action. We're using these note tags and the closing note tags to open it and start it. Each different, uh, what is it called? Not phrase, um, phase. Each different phase of the action sequence. And you'd put them in this order. If you're going to have a whole action, you're not going to use a target action, most likely. If you're going to use a target action, you're most likely not going to use a whole action. So a typical one would be like a setup action, a target action, and then a finish action. You don't always have to have a follow action. You don't even actually need a finish action. You don't even need a setup action, really. But it's good to include a setup action for some basic things to give some polish on it. Let's look at the basic attack action sequence. We do a setup action and then we display action. This is gonna put the name of the thing at the top. So it says attack. Then we're gonna make immortal. This is going to set all of your targets to immortal. Why you wanna have this is in case you're using plugins like counter control and several other reasons why. But you don't want the, the enemy to die in the middle of the action sequence because the action sequence is still gonna play. It's still gonna play and the enemy's gonna die and the, your character's gonna be attacking and doing the combination on an enemy that's gone. So it's like, it'll look weird. So we make our targets immortal and we do that by doing this command and that's it. So we show the, the text and we make our target gonna sit there and take it even if they have no HP until the sequence is done and then it can die, right? We're gonna do a target action. And since this is using an eval, it can do conditional statements. So we're saying inside the target action, we're gonna pick one target, not everybody. We're making a condition. We're saying user, and user is defined as the person who's using the skill. So if the person using the skill, attack motion is not a missile attack. So dot attack motion method is just, it checks to see if it's either, um, well, we have to go over here to define it because it can be different in your game. But if you go to systems, you can see motion right here. And there's three motions. There's thrust, there's swing, and there's missile. So when you make a new thing, like right here I have claw, that's probably going to be a swing motion in the image claw. Or actually it's not a claw, it's, it's an empty space. It's using the claw image. 
So you can s select an image that's an SV image. Well, we're not really going to worry about the SV image because we're overriding the SV image with the Enflies plugin, right? To show our own weapon image. <clears throat> because the SV image is limited to only a certain amount of uh, files. But if we use the Enflies weapon animation plugin, um, we can have an unlimited essentially number of custom weapons so we're not worried about this but we are going to have to pay attention to the motion we assign to that type of weapon so if they're using a bow it wouldn't make sense for the character to go to go face first to just go right in, next to the enemy and then shoot the bow right in their face right and then go back to where they were standing that doesn't make any sense so we're going to see if they're using a bow or not because all of the bows should set their motions to to missile so ranged attack so this custom action sequence, which is a very basic one, it's all over the forums. You can find these uh, on my website, driftwoodgaming.com. It's all over rpgmakerwebsforum.com. Um, where was I at? Skills? Right here. So we're checking. We're doing a conditional statement inside of a target action. We're targeting something. We're saying if the user's motion is missile, then we're going to move the targets we're gonna move the user target front 20 frames. So we're gonna, it's basically saying, move the user. Okay, no, if it's not missile, right? Cause this exclamation is not, I'm like, why would we move the user? If it's not missile, then we're gonna move the user over to the front of the enemy. Cause say he's got a sword now. We well, you know the sword is like a thrust or a, or a, a slash, right? Um, a swing, swing motion then the, we want to like, if we, it would look funny if we we're using the Final Fantasy 1 style, right? We're swinging from the back row with a sword. They take one step and and then all the way across the screen they take damage. The sequence is to get the character to go from where they are over to the enemy, swing their sword and then jump back. So if they're using a bow and arrow, you don't want them to just jump in front of the enemy and use it and then jump back. You want them to just go boom with the arrow and that's it. So if, they're not using a bow and arrow, then move the target, move the user to the target's front, and then you use commas to, to separate it. This is just the syntax. So we're saying move the user to the target's front over the course of 20 frames. Otherwise, perform start. Perform start is just going to start the skill. So just shoot the bow. So if they're using a bow, just shoot it. And then end closes the if statement. So this is a condition. But no matter what happens here, the next step is going to happen. So we're going to zoom the camera out to 120% over the course of 20, or zoom in rather on the target uh, over the course of 20 frames. Then we're going to set the camera screen to the target's front and center for over 20 frames. And we're going to focus on the target's front and center. So we're going to zoom in to where the character is going to go to get a better look at the target getting hit. We need to wait for movement so the action sequence doesn't read everything because it reads it all in like a frame and then it'll try to execute it all in like a very small amount of time. So you need to include weights so that everything doesn't just happen so fast. You'll be like, well, it doesn't work. Maybe it does work, but it works so good that you didn't even see it happen. So you need to include weights quite often. So we're waiting for the character to move across the screen because we said move the user. So it could take a while to move the user so while we're moving the user, we're still adjusting the camera and the zoom at the same time in the same frame. But then once the camera and the character are finished, we're, we're, we have to wait for movement. So once that's done, then you move on to the next thing. So we wait for movement. Then we're going to tell the user to do a motion attack. They're going to do their basic attack motion. And there's several motions. Look in the help file for more um, different motions that you can do. Then we're going to wait, you know, arbitrary number of frames, 10 frames. Then we're going to do an action animation on the target. Now action animation is going to take this thing right here, normal attack. And keep in mind with an action sequence, you can play any animation at any time on any target anywhere on the screen and multiple that. So you have to be very specific when you say animation. What we're doing here is we're saying use this actions animation on the target. Then we have to wait for that, otherwise it'll start it and it'll just keep moving on and you may not even see it finish or it'll do and bleed into the next things that are happening. Finally, the last thing that happens is we want this attack to do something, right? We, we played through all of the motions. We move the character, we move the camera, 
we made the character look like he's swinging. We shoot, we drew an animation. We did the motion. We drew the animation, but nothing really happened yet. In order for the damage formula to actually take place, we have to include this thing: action effect. This is the main beef of of the action sequence because this calls all of this over here. So when we say action effect, we're saying do the damage using this formula, this variance, this critical, and, and add these states. But actually, I don't think it'll even show the effects for action effect. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, I need to test that more. When I want to add custom states, I use action effect, but I don't even put them in the effects. I put them in the action sequence themselves because you can add states, remove states, change variables right inside the action sequence. So if, say I wanted it to add poison, I would even put it here. I would just say state, um, add state, colon, space, target, um, or the number. I would look at the syntax, right? In order to do that, I would go into the help file and I would find, is there, a, can I do a control F here? No, I cannot. Anyway, I know that I'd be using target to add the state if I wanted a poison. And we can add buffs. Here we go. We would go right here. So I would say add state and the number will be the number of poison, which I think is like five or three or whatever. And then a colon and I would say target comma show. If the show is included, it's going to display any state related messages. So you, you can actually not even put that. You can make it look like that. Add state five on the target, or you can make it look like that. Add state six, seven and eight on the user and then show them. So these are examples. Yanfly has done a fantastic job of including code examples in lunatic mode to do custom stuff. And it's just a really, really awesome plugin. In fact, when these plugins made their debut three years ago, over three years ago, the second day that Yanfly put out the action sequence packs and I saw what you can do with MV using action sequences, that's when I did my first pre-order ever. The first time I ever pre-ordered a video game, well, this is technically an engine, but you know, first time I ever pre-ordered any piece of software. It was RPG Maker MV, it's the only thing I've ever pre-ordered, and I ordered it the day that Yanfly put out the action sequence plugins. So they're very powerful, and you can do so many things with them. There are some free ones you can use on the forums, also on my website. And uh, it's better just to look at some examples dissect them, change one thing, see what happens, but read the help files to get started. It is a lot. Action sequencing is hard. Making custom animations, hard in its own way, right? But a lot easier to understand than all of the code and syntax you need for action sequencing. But for example, um, let's take a look at some action sequencing to show you the difference between basic attacks and action sequencing. If we look at this one right here, this is the basic attack Omni Slash, Shriant, Devin Scott, Charles and Nico, everybody's here. Everybody's coming. Doc Wees, Boro B, High Blitz, Tarek, Abu Yosif, thank you for coming. Everybody, welcome to the stream. We're doing some. We're doing some different things. We were doing some arting. But then we had some, some basic questions on action sequencing and. And I wanted to go over that because a lot of people are so confused on how to use action sequencing and it's such an awesome thing. It would be cool if more people used action sequencing in their project. So we're gonna watch what happens when we tell Jinx to use her basic attack. She goes over to the front of the enemy, the camera zooms in over the course of 20 frames, it waits for the movement, it shows the action animation, so her, her movement, it's going to draw the weapon because we're putting a weapon animation on it. You see how the pink staff right there? Pink rod? And we see we have a lightsaber coming out of the hand instead of just like a default sword. We're using Anfly's weapon animation to show the custom weapons. We put those in the IMG weapon folder. And even the enemies are using action sequencing. They're going over to the front of their target and then they're attacking, showing their attack, anima uh, attack motion and their action animation.
Let's take a look at some other things, Fusion, that you can do with action sequencing. You can hide menus, you can make the screen flash, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Let me get some TP. Let's see. For spells, we're not jumping across the screen. Watch what happens. We use a spell. She just stands there and does a spell because there's no point in going across to hit the enemy, right? She's just casting a spell. So that would fall under the missiles. But it's actually a it's actually not using attack animation like that. But anyway, it would it would be the same thing as if she shot a she shot a bow. She would just use the bow. It wouldn't move the character across the screen. You see how on that move right there, we can actually fix that. Let's actually improve my game while we're doing this. For that skill, the enemy used kickback. And it's a, a goat leg to the face, but the but the goat didn't actually the the chimerico didn't actually go across the screen. It just moved forward and did it. Like so let's add the basic attack action sequence right to that move as well. Kickback. Boom. Now that we put this code in here, when when the chimerico, when the enemy uses kickback, it will go in front of the enemy, use the skill, and then go back. What other thing do we want to make that? Let's give the Vibrine Tail that same action sequence. Thirsty Bite already has it. Chomp has it. Dark Wing does not have it. It's, an, it's a... This is a... Okay, that's... I thought that was scope all enemies. It doesn't matter. Scratch has it. Dig. These all have the action sequencing. And you can customize them, right? For each skill, could look different if you wanted to. But there was one that was missing an action sequence that I just noticed, so that's good that we were testing that. Anyway, let's take a look at some other stuff you can do with action sequencing. We have enough TP on Edmund now. So Radiant Beam, this is another action sequence. This is using some other stuff. But let's see what happens. We zoom in. The screen goes away, right? We, we tent the screen. We're playing multiple animations, multiple sound effects, multiple action animations, multiple action effects, right? So it's going ding, 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 ding. Damage is popping up multiple times. We got zooms going on. We have the um, overhead, the heads up display has been erased while, while this is happening to put more real estate and focus on the screen. So that's basically kind of what I wanted to illustrate. Cool. I think we were going to record a custom sound effect for the um, the animation, but I don't want to mess with Audacity right now because it's messing up the live streams, mic the microphone for during the live stream. So I'll do more of my audio recordings off camera. I've I have done audio recording several times on camera, so it's possible, but sometimes it gets glitchy. I don't want to mess with it. Um, if you are interested to see how that works, watch some of the earlier live streams. We've, I've done that a bunch. The sna 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 sna. You can see how I reverse the audio and how I process the audio. Sorry, I'm quite good at sidetracking you. Yeah, you ask good questions. When, when somebody asks a good question, um, I feel compelled to help them. But that's fine. Um, we did fix a bug. I didn't notice that this was missing an action sequence, and I found that in trying to help you. So I made progress. It's all good. So I was helping you with something that sidetracked me from helping you with something that sidetracked me from doing something else, right? <laughs> so we're, we're going to, we, I showed how to use tweening, right? You just do the first frame, the last frame, and um, you can do multiple things with this, right? Let's go to the last frame, the very last frame, and let's say the scale is going to be 200, and the opacity is gonna be 100. Right, so you've got that, and then it gets real big at the end. Well, what we can do is tween them again and and put all of the data changes from the first to last frame in all the cells. So now it's it's going to take 
the difference between the first and the last frame where we have full opacity and we have very limited opacity and it's going to spread them out so that frame 9 has a little bit 117 and then it gets more op uh, opaque as it goes to the first frame and the scale also changes so it makes a smooth transition so now we've got that smooth transition and you can do other things by editing the first frame let's set this to, to like I don't know 25% with the full opacity put this back to zero and we'll make this 300% with 50 opacity and we can tween the entire data set again and we'll have much more of a change yeah we can add custom sound effects to it you can make your own sound effects I already have done a lot of those and add those or you can use pre-existing ones you can also download assets online let's make like a wind one here or let's use rather and then maybe on frame 7 we'll have a like an effect one and we'll flash the target maybe like a, a green blue color let's put it on frame 6 This takes too long to, to start. I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to put another sound effect on frame two. Actually, yeah, frame two. Something that's a little more tighter. Yep, like that. Oh, I changed it. That messed it up. That's fine. We'll take this. Okay, I'm going to copy this. Paste this right here. Change this to get rid of the flash and just... Keep... What, what did I have here? I don't know. It doesn't matter. custom spiral O2 so we completely made this entire thing except for the sound effects ourselves but we can put that on a skill or an item because mostly they're the same year some notable differences. No problem, Fusion. How you doing, Ren? Thanks for coming to the stream. How's your day going? Busy at work? That's cool. We made our guano plate we need to include it as a synthesis ingredient it'll be a tinkering recipe we'll say it requires three bat guanos bat guano three and that is item 66 we'll include it inside the tinkerers kit so the item recipe will add 66 as well bam so now when we rescue Devin, the tinkerer, it'll uh, unlock the, the recipe to make the, the guano plate, which sells for profit. So we harvest bat crap, or bat guano, 
and we make plates so people can eat off of the bat crap plates and uh, make money selling those. Alright, so that item has a use. Let's move on down. We need, we need to give every item a use somehow. The uncommon items, the 10% drops, don't really have a use yet. So let's figure out what we can do with those, those drops. The enemies, memory fragments, am I using those for anything? I don't know. Bio slime, fox whisker, scorpion pincer, moldy cheeses has a use, it's got a use for something. The guano's got a use, the spider fang does not, the lake does, and the poison fang. So we can make spider fang and poison fang. Those two items can cre create like a very powerful poison. We can make a new state for that. We can call it super poison. Or we could be more creative. Maybe if I make a sprite 32 by 32. I can get some inspiration for what I'm going to call the skill that, that you can make. It's going to be a tinkerer recipe. You just got stung by a wasp? Oh gosh, Pukachi, no! T got stung by a wasp a few months ago. It stung her on the head. She had like a little bump there. It was, it was awful. I know that's no good. That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, Puka. I try to protect bees, but I hate wasps. They're such buttholes. They're very aggressive. Bees are usually really cool. Bees don't attack you. Bees just want to pollinate flowers, and they try to go about their business, and they don't try to bother you most of the time. Well, unless you're trying to swat at them. But wasps are aggressive. Extremely aggressive. I live in New York. Like, you could just be walking by and a wasp will try to come at you. I'm like, whoa, chill. They're extremely territorial. When I see a wasp, I typically kill it. But if I see a bee or other bugs, I usually don't bother them. I don't, I don't like to kill them. But wasps will just sneak up on you and sting you when you don't even look or uh, instigate at all. So I kill wasps, but I leave all other bugs alone. Pretty much. Let's use the NTSC Nintendo scheme for this theme. You try to catch him with a paper? Well, sometimes if you play with fire, you know what happens. Were you trying to catch him because he was in your house and you wanted to get him out of your house? I'm, I'm done doing that. Now, a bee, I'll get a, a plate and a cup uh, or a whatever, you know, some sort of glass. And I'll catch a bee, boom, outside. Go go make tomatoes or whatever, you know, go pollinate flowers. Go make honey. But a wasp, I don't play that anymore. I'm just like, bang, wasp is done. Because they're, it's not worth it. Oh, you know what I could have done is just turned on uh, the symmetry, and that would probably make it easier on me. Yeah, let's do that.
There we go. I like that better. But it's going to be a poison, right? Super poison. So let's change the scheme to like this nastier green. We can call it Vicious Poison. Yeah. So we'll select this empty spot, hit OK, save the game, reopen the database, and it'll be there. So we'll call this Vicious Poison. And it's going to be a mean, nasty poison. It's going to reduce their max HP by 25%, so we're setting it to 0.75. It's going to add an X parameter of negative HP regeneration, 2%, or 3%. Yeah, that's better. And there was another way to incorporate poisons using Yanfly's tips and tricks. I forgot the code that was used. <clears throat> I think you need buff states core, but I'm using that. Supremo! Welcome to the stream. How are you doing, Supremo? First, need a story plot? Nah, you don't need it at first. Everybody's workflow is different. Natural Explorer needs to be submitted for IGMC 2018. It won't fit the criteria, Puka. I've been working on it for a while. Yeah. Started way before. It's not a it's not a game jam entry. It's just going to be a <clears throat> a project that gets completed, polished, and then published to Steam. What else is this going to do? It's going to apply some stuff. We've changed the parameters. We've we've uh, made a damage over time using percent, which I don't like percent, but it's okay. We'll just use a low percent amount. And we'll make the uh, evasion rate go down. So they'll lose 20% evasion. So like they're going to get hit more while they're poisoned as well.
We can curse them and make them take 20% more physical damage. Ooh, that's a nasty one. I think that's good right there. That makes it a thing. It'll, it'll last for five turns. We'll make it four to five so there's some variance in it. Reducing the max HP is vicious because if you do that at the beginning, like if you start the fight with like a boss who's got a ton of HP and you reduce their max HP 75%, even after this buff wears off, they lost 25% of their HP. So I want this to be very strong because it's not going to be an easy thing to get, right? It's going to be you. It's, that state is going to be applied when we... Um, use a new item that I'm about to create, which is going to be a recipe when you from combining two uncommon drops, right? Two drops that are 10% chance each. So we need to make the item called um, Vicious Toxins or Toxin. Is that how you spell vicious? Discord. Discord. Spell check vicious. That is right. No, it's not. Discord, are you spell checking me? Spell check is on. Is vicious also a word? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. See how it. There we go. Visions. Vicious, viscous, vicious, vicious. V I C I O U S, vicious. Okay, I got it right. Yeah. Thank you, Cajun. Vicious toxin. I'm going to change the state to also say toxin. And it reduces enemies' max HP by 25%. That is, that is vicious. That is a vicious. It is not, it is consumable, but it's only usable in the battle screen and the scope is one enemy. Reduces your target's max HP by 25%. Applies a 3% damage over time. I should probably list these out very, very clean. Evasion rate minus 20. Physical damage times 20. Damage all, I can just say, physical damage. Instead of just saying physical, I'm gonna go icon one, two, four, eight, physical, damage taken, plus 20%, comma. It's not actually gonna apply. Oh yeah, we can make it apply damage too. Because it's you know it's gonna be powerful. I'm not gonna let this critical though. It's gonna be a set amount. It's from a level six and a level eight, I think. 1400 with some variance. The vile concoction, I'm gonna say no. It can't critical with slightly less as well. And I'm gonna make this a thousand. We're gonna make this be a synthesis ingredient, a recipe that is created with the poison fang and the spider fang.
Spider Fang, Poison Fang, and I think the idea of using three things is good. So I'm gonna make Bio Slime also a requirement. Bio Slime is a common item, isn't it? Let's see. No, Bio Slime is the uncommon, right? So the uncommon of this one. This one, nope. The uncommon for the level seven, the level eight, and the level two will create this very, very powerful custom state. Yeah, that's good. These are all uncommon drops, so it's 10% chance to get that from the spider, 10% chance to get that from the chimer chimerico, I think, and 10% chance for the, from the vile worm. So these are uncommon, that looks fine. But let's add up the value and add some to it. What's happening? Oh, the struggles. 200 from the bio slime. Poison Fang is 1600 and the Spider Fang, so that's 3200. Let's make it worth 4500. We didn't finish the description either. Let's fix that. Evasion rate minus 20% and HP regen minus 3%. Evasion minus 20% and <clears throat> is 32. HP regen minus 3%. That's pretty wicked. Star Ocean 2 is a very good game. For some reason, it, it showed me the load, and I'm like, what's happening? Why is it not doing the thing? But, but I look at my upload rate, and it doesn't change. Like, I'm consistently uploading, so I don't understand what the problem is. I'm, I don't know, I'm seriously considering just going to Twitch and streaming, doing my live streams on Twitch. Like, I think it's my ISP from time to time, but when it consistently keeps the, the upload, you know, it doesn't, I know it when it's my ISP, because when it's my ISP, what? No, stop doing that. When it's my ISP, this will go to red and say zero. And that happens from time to time, but it hasn't happened lately, and the stream still like rips. And I'm like, what's happening? And I've just had so many issues with YouTube lately. It's very frustrating. And why are the dashboards not secured through? Apparently, through SSL, like they're ripping out so much functionality from. Google Plus or whatever they're doing, that it's a mess right now. I think we need we need to just give them some time to to fix it, but it's just frustrating, really. It's frustrating for everybody, the viewers, the, the content creators. I do like their new studio beta though. I've been using it more and more. So I like what they're doing there. I, I foresee it fixing itself in enough time but it's rough right now, man. Anyway. Legend of Dragoon was cliche, but I liked it. It was good.
Star Ocean was awesome, but the the PS3, th Xbox 360, and on, I don't really care for. I didn't give a crap about it. Like I played it, and I'm like, this is not what I think of when I play Star Ocean. Star Ocean, the SNES version, the PlayStation One version. What was it? A uh, second story or something like that? Uh, forgot what it was. The SNES ROM was so good. It was so good. And I think it was PlayStation 1. I loved it. They had like this endless dungeon type of thing. I played it for like 100 hours. It was very good. Star Ocean, that is. But I don't like where it's gone. I don't really like where it's gone. But um, I will say I didn't play the last one. I got offered to play it as a reviewer, but because I don't own a PS4, I was like, no, I can't, I can't do this. I don't have time when really I just don't have a PS4. So. <laughs> and I also didn't have a lot of time, so it was whatever. They were gonna send me a press copy. I was like, well, that's cool. I'm a real YouTuber. I'm getting offers, blah, blah, blah. They weren't gonna pay me. They were just gonna give me a copy of it to play. I was like, uh, if I had a PS4, I would say, yeah. But I wasn't going to have them send me a copy when I don't even own a PS4, so. I haven't found a reason to justify buying it yet, you know? I thought maybe I would for Final Fantasy XV, but I wasn't really into the boy band simulator. I still don't know if I'll play XV. I've played every other one, so I imagine at some point, I think it's on sale right now even, $25, but... I got too much other stuff to do. At some point in the future, I'll play 15. I don't know what Square Enix is doing right now. They're, they're a whole lot of mess. Activision, Acta Blizzard too. Activision Blizzard, I don't know what they're doing. They've, they've, they're, they're, everybody's chasing the mobile dollar because this year, the, the amount of money that mobile has pulled in is slightly higher than consoles and PCs together. So I see what they're, I, I see, you know, they're chasing the dollar, but I don't, I don't think they're going to make their current audience happy. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad decision for them because they're probably going to make more money, right? It's gonna go up overall. But the thing is, it's gonna be a rough shifting. It's like when a content creator makes a certain type of content, and then they may start making a different type of content that's nothing like the other stuff. It doesn't even relate to the other stuff, really. And, and then they expect their current audience to be happy about it. No, it's not going to happen like that. Their, their current audience is going to not like it, but they're going to bring in new audience, right? They're going to get new audience. So that's what they're hoping, and that's what I think will probably happen. But the only thing I can say about that is if you don't like their decisions, don't support them monetarily. If you don't like their decisions in making the mobile games, don't play their mobile games. Definitely don't spend any money on their microtransactions because then they'll see, you know, how much money are they actually making and how much money um, were they making beforehand and they have all the analytics they need to see. If you vote with your wallet, um, it's really up to, can they bring in enough newer, younger audience with disposable income? to justify the loss of activity that they're going to see from their current audience. So I expect their stops, stocks to dip quite a bit, maybe start to pick up at some point, but that's only after they start pulling in the microtransaction money. They see like, hey, look what we're actually making. People may be hating us, but look what we're actually making. So it'll probably go down for quite a while until they can show, prove profit. Right? They have to prove it profit. I don't know why I got on this mobile uh, market tirade. Anyway, let's get back to making this item. We need to design an animation for it, right? We could use the one we just created. We could use the one, we just, but we'll make something different out of it. So let's give an animation. We're gonna make it the next one. 
not the custom spiral, that's too simple, but we'll do something with that. So animation 206 is going to be when we use this. So let's copy this and paste this here, but then what we'll do is add something different for another image, because we can add, uh, where's DJ Khaled? Another one, another one. We the bit, okay. And we could, oops, right here. Actually going to 101, right, new. And I can just edit this right here, zero, zero. And pattern 102 is where we're starting on frame one. And we'll go to 10. And this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Actually, we're gonna skip this ahead. One, two, three. So it's 105. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right there. So we'll go here. Edit this and say zero, zero. Scale will be 250. Opacity will be 200. And we're going to tween. frames 1 to 10, but cells 2 to 16. Actually, just frame, just cell 2, but 2 to 16 is fine. And we'll take all the data, not including the first one, and we'll tween that. So now we have a... We've got some sparkles. We just added some sparkle animation to it, right? Perfect. And we'll add a new animation uh, sound effect on frame five, like a water or a poison type sound effect. Kind of like that one, we'll go with that. Okay, cool. This is going to be vicious. Toxin, vicious toxin animation. We'll hit apply, go to the item and put it right there. So we need to get these items, see if it uh, works in the crafting menu. And then if it works in the crafting menu, we need to test it in combat to see if it looks right and if it feels right. So let's do some beta testing. Let's do some beta testing now. We're going to give the player these items because they're they're low percent drops. So it'll take a while to farm them. Which I can do in the initialization phase. Player is going to need <clears throat> Spider Fang. Poison Fang, and Bio Slime. Yeah. We'll have to go rescue Devin, that's fine. Unlock the crafting system. The only mobile game I ever liked and played more than like a single time is Final Fantasy Record Keeper. I, well, that's not true. I did play um, Brave Exvius a little bit too for a couple weeks. I played Brave Exvius. I never spent anything on Brave Exvius and I hated their system. I did spend money on Record Keeper. Ooh, that's bad. It's the only one. Guys, I have one. I have one. Okay. I did spend money on Final Fantasy Record Keeper. I played it for over three years. I haven't played it in a little while, but I'll probably play it again, right? It's just one of those games. It's one of those games. They don't... You don't have to spend any money. 
I know they hired psychologists because I didn't feel like I had to spend it. I was like, well, right at this moment, I had the money. And I was like, you know, I want this thing. It was immediate regret, right? It was like, hey, that wasn't worth that. That was not worth that at all. So there is one game that got my number, right? There was one. Record Keeper did it. So be careful, guys. Record Keeper is a good one. It's not as flashy as uh, some of them out there. Anywho, let's go rescue Devin. Got the weapon unleashed on that one. Kick some butt. Would it be a Driftwood Gaming live stream without tangents, rabbit holes, and tirades? Probably not. I get I get distracted. So shiny. Squirrel! Ooh. If you can just hit attack to win and spam healing items, the system for that's every RPG ever, Omni. It's every RPG ever. Wouldn't say all Final Fantasies were bad after 10. I did play 11 and 14 for a while, but I mean, they don't make them like they used to. It's true. I still like 11, but I just don't play it because it's like it's like a sickness. If I get into it really bad, I neglect my other things. And 14, it, it, it's less of an issue with 14 because it just doesn't keep my interest that long. I'll play it for a couple weeks. I'll resub and play for a couple weeks and then unsub. And I do that probably once a year. I'm like, hey, yeah, I want to get back into it. Oh, they made Samurai. Let's just check out that thing and boop it doo Oh, okay. That's what it is. I'm done. You know. Something about 11 kept me coming back to it for years and years and years and I still think about Final Fantasy 11 that's one of those those games that will forever be ingrained in my head and I could probably be happy playing that game if that was like the one game I had to play or I got to play or whatever for a while anyway Nine was good, but you know, obviously it's not an MMO, where, what I was talking about. I like Final Fantasy Nine. It was very different. Nine felt unlike the rest, you know, in a, in a good, refreshing way. I, I really liked Nine. I spent a lot of extra hours, like 40 hours, doing all of the, the optional stuff. I think I played it like 70 hours total. Nine was great. Nine was really good. It was very different, but it was good. Okay, let's do Synthesis. Crafting, Vile Concoction, and where was the other thing? Did I not include it? Why is it not here? Oh, I didn't include it to the thing, did I? Hold up. 67 is our Tinkerer's Kit. We didn't add it to the kit, so we don't have the, we don't have the recipe for it. Not 76, yo, 67. Can I get rid of these spaces and will it still read accurately? I think it will. Let's do that for spacing purposes, for readability. See if it still works the same. I'm sure it will. Gotta do the old snuh, 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 snuh again. This is why we beat him. Edmund beat him. Is there a way to make game inside of game? What I'm in is like a switch to a mini game inside of the game. Absolutely, you can do that. Look, this is a piano simulator. It's inside of the game.
Okay, I'll, I'll take tips. I'll be here all day. Anyway, yeah. Piano minigame. Inside the game. There's a tutorial on that. This is, a, can, this is actually like a farming minigame, right? We made like a farming minigame. It's not necessarily a... Sure it is, right? It's kind of a, a boring game if you think about that. It's just all you do is put seeds in the ground and wait for them to grow. They are 1% of the way done. 3% of the way done. I mean, but it's still a system inside of a system. <laughs> Everybody who's who's ever liked a game, there's going to be somebody who doesn't like it. And that's fine. You just have to accept that. Because people are different. And that's what makes this That's what makes us um, have so many different things in the world. So much variety. If everybody was the same, it would be a terrible mono mono culture. And I don't know. It'd be a very boring planet. That sucks, Omni. I hate to hear that. I hope you're doing okay now. How old were you when you if you don't mind saying, when you had your stroke. You got the Tinkerer's Kit. Vicious Toxin is now here. And it looks cool too. I like the, I like the icon we made for it. Vicious Toxin. And you know what's cool about the A-Sprite um, images as well? They're extremely small. They save into like a very, very compressed format that still looks good and it's pixel perfect, but it's like two kilobytes or something very, very small. Only 38, wow, man. That's, that's, that's a tough break, you got a tough hand. Reduce your target's max HP by 25%, physical damage taken plus 20%, evasion minus 20%, HP regen minus 3%. Let's make a bunch of them. Yes. Let's fight some stuff now. You know what I need to do is make a boss. I need to make a super boss. I've got eight regular enemies, and they could all be boss versions in their own right. I think tomorrow's episode, wait, it's Friday. I'm not gonna be streaming tomorrow. If I do, it might be like some just random crap on Twitch, just to see if we can get the Twitch stream smoothly. I'll probably play PoE or something. Something different on Twitch. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, Eastern Standard Time. when I live stream. But what I'm thinking about doing is making, oh, that looks so cool. Get wrecked. I mean, that's a very hard item to make. So you'd want to use it on a boss, right? And the, the animation looks great. V vicious toxin. Bang! <laughs> Drifty should use my mirror. Okay, let's use Devin's mirror and let the Chimerico kill itself, right? Devin's mirror. Hold up a mirror and show the enemy their own flaws. It will reflect most types of damage. I don't think it reflects physical damage. Let's use one on, on Jinx too. Bing! Liquid breath, oh, take your own damage. Boink, boink, reflected. Let's just guard and make him kill himself with Devin, the power of Devin's mirror. Oh no, kickback doesn't get reflected. But now we fixed it, right? Kickback actually, he goes to the, he's got an action sequence now, so we did that, but we did that in this episode.
That was a specific type of damage that ref got reflected. The mirror holds them up and that'll be physical. Yeah, that doesn't reflect it. Viper and tell yourself. Oh man. It wore off. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to have some carrots. No no chopped carrots. Oh I didn't actually craft those yet. We're gonna have some cabbage. Yum yum yum. And what else did I make? Strange liquid. Let's do strange liquid. What does that do again? It picks like a random state. Oh yeah, it gives you like a random state every turn for five turns. So this turn he got confusion. He got confusionism. Let's do a strange liquid on Jinx as well. Weapon unleash. Get him. Yeah, boy. The sec this time he got focused. So intelligence buff. I like how the state animation stays the same size even though the character zooms in. That's funny. <laughs> anyway guys, that's gonna do it for today's live stream. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for joining me in the live stream. I love you guys very much. You guys are awesome. I love the conversations we have. Um, please, let's continue these conversations. I have a, a Discord. The link is in the description below if you want to join the Discord. If you like to support what I do, you like what I do on this channel, I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. Patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. All support is appreciated, but it's not required. Um, thank you guys for coming to the live stream. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm going to try streaming on Twitch maybe this weekend. Maybe not. We'll see. But if you do want to follow me, twitch.tv slash driftwoodgaming. I'm also on the tweeters, twitter.com slash driftwoodgaming if you want to catch updates when I release things or when I say random thoughts, which isn't too often, really. I, I usually just auto-tweet. Like, when I post a video or something, it gets, like, in case you don't have notifications on, it will be posted to my Twitter. But hit that notification bell if you want to know when I go live or um, when I post new tutorials. SRPG Studio uh, tutorials will come out, but it'll be a little while. Thank you to those of you who are talking about it today. Action sequencing. We talked a little bit about that today. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. There are action sequencing on my website, driftwithgaming.com, free to use. Um, also, the forum has a bunch of free assets in action sequencing, uh, RPG Maker web forums. Check that out if you are looking for free assets to your game. Do a little research. If you work on your research skills, you'll become better at everything you pursue in life. So learn to research. And thank you guys for coming. I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of ASMR. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. It's very awesome of you guys to come every day and hang out with me. We'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic weekend.